Okay, welcome back to the channel. So today we've got another video on the uh, Man TV Crafter Van. And today we are predominantly looking at the timing belt, the water pump, and the bottom crank oil seal. So when we brought it up to the yard, it's the first real opportunity I've had to drive the van. I did take it up for an MOT at the same time, and it did fail the MOT, um, mostly on the rear brakes. The rear brakes on this are a combination of drums and discs. Um, it's got a big disc brake and the drum inside the hat of the disc. Similar sort of system on a BMW, etc. So it's really difficult to film to do it. Um, I have changed the disc, the pads and the drums. It was dragging, they were just, basically the drums are delaminated inside, uh, possibly from where it's been stood for so long. So renewed all that, but I didn't really film any of it because it was very, very difficult to get in there. Yeah, difficult for just me to get in there without the camera as well. So. I may do some filming on that because I do need to do some final adjustments on the handbrake before it goes back to the MOT. Um, and I want to clean up the front brakes as well, so that may come in in a later video, but I didn't actually record any change in the rear discs, but hopefully I'll be able to show you what I've done. So today, we, like I said, we're looking at the crank seal. So because we drove it up to the yard, got it properly warm, it did show up that it had a oil leak at the front of the engine. Um, very, very small water leak as well, but the oil leak was the main problem. We really don't want an oil leak on the driveway, etc. So we got it into the spray booth and it was very, very tight. So I decided to take the front end of the van off anyway, because um, A, if I'm going to change the, the timing belt and the water pump and the bits and pieces, then it makes sense to take the front end off. It just makes it so much easier. I haven't actually charged up the aircon yet, so that didn't really matter. So all I've lost is a bit of antifreeze, which is easily re replaced. So we strip the front of the van, the end of the van off, and we can get it up into the spray booth properly. Uh, that way we can get around the back of the van and get it all sorted out. So now that's all done, push the van back a bit, and now we can get on and do the front end. So with the front end of the van off, because this is a rear wheel drive van, all the timing belt and all the bits and pieces right at the front of the engine. Now if you're doing this uh, on a Volkswagen Golf or an Audi or something like that, um, the engines are transverse. Even the um, other models of this van, all the engines are transverse. So the timing belt and the water pump and everything's up against the side of the engine bay. But because this is rear wheel drive and it's an inline engine, it's right at the front of the engine. And with the front of the van off, it, it's a really easy job. The tool to buy on eBay, you can buy a, a locking set for the timing on eBay. They're fairly cheap, they're about 20 quid. And the timing belt, um, I think the time belt kit with the tensioners is just over £100 and then the water pump was another £100 so that's pretty much it and then the crank oil seal I can't remember exactly I'll have to have a look at that but I think that was about £30-£40 as well that has to come from the main dealer and it's um, a moldy plastic piece with the um, seal in you'll, you'll see that in a minute anyway so in total probably £250 in parts but to have this done at a garage you're looking about six or seven hundred pounds to get it done possibly more than that depending on where you go um so it's, it's a worthwhile saving to do um and it's no it's not difficult with the locking pins as long as you've got the right tools to do the job it is really quite simple and like i said the, the, the locking pin kits now are so cheap to buy on ebay um, it kind of makes sense just to do it yourself so with that in mind we'll uh, make a start Okay, so obviously access really did with the front of the van off. So the first thing to do is get the fan off the um, the front pulley. So this is a M12 spline and it's a left hand thread. So it needs to come off. These are M10 splines. And then get that out of the way. So that's these. And then these ones are M12 again.
So the tensioner is uh, M16. And then that takes the auxiliary belt off. And the bottom pulley comes off. Okay, so to get the cover off, we've got a, a T30 Torx here. Okay, so it's so exposed the timing belt, and basically, I think from where it had the accident, something probably got pushed into this plastic casing. The crank seal itself literally is just plastic on the casing, nothing very strong, and it's just held on with these little 10 mils. So, the timing belt itself obviously got an idler, pull idler pulley there, tensioner there, another idler, it's the water pump. Not electric on this one, which I was expecting it to be, but it isn't. Um, the one I've got isn't uh, an electric water pump. There is a version of this water pump which has an electrical connector on it, and all it does is put a shroud over the uh, water pump, and it stops the water circulating until it's warmed up enough. Uh, it just helps uh, the vehicle warm up quicker. So first thing we need to do then is rotate this round until we get to top dead center. Okay, so you put a 19 millimeter spanner on the crank and turn it until the timing marks roughly line up. So this screw here has this cut out piece that may or may not be able to see behind there. There's a hole in the actual head for it to pin the slot into. Same on the water pump just there you can see there's an actual hole in the head for the pin to go through and then down on the crank case there's this hole that the piece goes into as well so I stick those in there and I'll show you now okay, so once you've got it roughly in place with the 19 mil get your bottom crank so this is the pin that slots into this piece and these two pins slot into there there's an indent for this raised piece here, so we know we've got it in the right place. So that slots on there, and then that slots into here. And then the two pins for the timing belt itself. So one goes in there, like I said, slots into the head. It is a tight fit, but it does go in. And then another one for the water pump, uh, sorry, for the fuel pump. So this basically locks the engine in place. So although we are doing this, we're actually changing this housing here, we've locked the timing in place. The water pump doesn't matter, there's no timing on the water pump. The idlers, bits and pieces. So next thing to do then is undo the tensioner, release the, be um, the belt off, and then I can change this actual cover. So take this off, the crank won't rotate enough to make it a problem. So we can just rotate it back, or if it, if it moves at all, we can just use this then to place it back in place. So that's the 15 mil. So that's the tension there. Let's see, all this will be renewed. You buy it as a complete kit. So water pump needs to come out. That needs to be replaced because we think that's where, yeah, you can see where that's leaking from there. So, and the oil was uh, seeping out of here.
Okay, so to change this bottom seal cover, we need to take this back off. So we just pull that pin back out and pull this off. Just undo these bolts. Okay, so I've marked those two, so we do need to take this bolt off to get this crank pulley out. So if it turns at all, we know where we will be at. Okay, so at this point, um, I grabbed the rag and started giving everything a wipe down. So when I took the bottom cover off, I didn't want to get any contaminants in the oil and no grit and no dirt. So really important now to just keep everything nice and clean and tidy. So I took the airline, blew all the holes out, cleaned it all up, grabbed some um, spirits and just gave it a good soak. Cleaned it all up as best I can. Now here I'm just gently, very gently levering off that uh, plastic cover with a nice flat blade that went in behind and it's sealed onto the sump uh, but there's a, a built-in gasket on the actual plastic piece that goes onto the block but the sump had some sealer on it so now it's just cleaning all those surfaces and scraping the actual sealer off the sump but scraping it away from the sump rather than into it the last thing you want to do is get any um, bits and pieces into the oil itself there's that little belt you can see at the bottom there inside the sump. That's actually a wet belt for the uh, oil pump. So grabbed a, um, a tube of um, sealer for the gasket and then just a continuous very small bead. As long as it's got no uh, gaps in it, it'll seal fine. Just very, very little amount. You don't need very much. And then grab the new seal. You can see the um, the seal that goes against the block that's on there. So just put a little bit of oil on the actual um, crank seal itself just to help seat it and make sure it didn't uh, catch on anything as it's going on. And then just pushed it over the end of the crank. Next job then is just replace those 10 mil bolts. Uh, again, do these very slowly in, in stages basically. The idea is to make sure you can get it into the corner um, and the only way to do that is by just gently sneaking up on the um, on the torque figure basically just bit by bit each bolt in to there just finger tight initially and then go around and tighten them all up and just by doing that it helps pull it tight into the corner helps displace the seal it into where it needs to be so once I've got those bolts in, the next one now is the um, idler pulley. So I'm using the uh, two nut method on this. Basically you can jam the two nuts together and then use it to undo the uh, stud out of the block. Uh, you can get stud extractors. I haven't got any, I've never needed them. I've always used two nuts on it and it's always, always worked. So you don't necessarily have to replace these studs. Um, I believe it was a problem on the earlier engines, on the PD engines, but on the later common rail diesel engines, it doesn't seem to be the same sort of problem. Um, but since they're in the kit, it makes sense to change them anyway. So that one's done, and that top one where the um, t tensioner goes, that uh, was quite rusty, so that was replaced anyway. So moving on to the water pump, the three 10 mil spline bolts need to go in. Again, nice and evenly, nice and gently to begin with, just until it's seated. If you try and do one up fully, it'll just uh, displace the seal out the back and that uh, won't work. So nice and gently and then tighten them all up. 
So put the belt on. The belt is very stiff, it's brand new, so uh, using a clamp on the bottom is a really good idea. It just helps keep it in place because you've only got one pair of hands and trying to get it in there and hold it on. It's very, very difficult. So you need to feed the belt around the um, fuel pump. Make sure the belt is nice and tight so you're not skipped any teeth. And then underneath that top idler, around the camshaft and onto the tensioner. Now you can't actually get the uh, belt onto the tensioner, you have to take it back off that stud and then slip the two on together. So the tensioner has an arrow on the face showing you which way you're supposed to tension it. So make sure the uh, base of the tensioner is in the slot in the block and then put the nut on and then twist it in the direction the arrow says and then there's a pointer on the back of it that just lines up with a, um, a slot in that back plate. So that's a T30 Torx, loosen that off and then set the tension. The idea is that that will uh, allow the belt to rotate the uh, pulley if need be. You can see there that it didn't actually move at all but if it just needed a slight movement it would allow that and put the proper tension on the belt. So. Once you've got to that point, make sure everything's tight, double check everything, and then turn the engine over by hand a couple of times. This will help seat, seat the belt into place, and uh, we can double check the timing. So put all the, the uh, timing um, markers back in, put the bottom one on, twist it, and then the pins should go straight back in, which they did. All you've got to do then is reset that tension again, just so that it's right. So that pointer then is in that uh, slot at the back of the plate. So just paranoid double check everything and uh, make sure it's all tight. So moving on to the bottom half of the timing belt cover, clips in at the bottom and then the uh, T30 torque screws to hold it in. This piece is straightforward enough but uh, the top half was a little bit fiddly. It's not too bad, it's just trying to get it slotted in. Uh, it needs to slot in at the top and on the sides and then that little cover on the, the other side. Getting it all in and then there's another T30 Torx on that one just to hold it in place. And once it's seated in, it's all good. So the nipple on the bottom pulley actually lines up with a little hole in the bottom uh, harmonic balancer. That lines up in there. These are M10 triple squares or M10 spline bolts. The auxiliary belt can go on, so this is a tensioner here, 16mm, and you can just twist the tensioner. So that goes in behind there. And then the drive for the fan. Now there doesn't seem to be any real um, adjustment for the drive for the fan other than the bolts and the mounts. So there's no way of tensioning this. So the only way I could work out how to do it was to put this bolt in first. Fairly loose. Pull the others out so that you can then twist this and then put this belt on. And then basically push this up until it tensions the belt. Make sure that they're not cross threading with it. So 
So, the only other bit then is to replace the fan. Again, this is um, a left hand thread on this. So that just sits on there. And then the bolt again, M10 triple square. Sorry, M12 triple square. So the other bit then is to replace the uh, rad pack and all the bits and pieces again, which we'll just uh, zoom through because we have already done this once. So apart from the bumper, that's the front end all back together. So the bumper has been painted, so I want to be careful with that. So it's going to take two of us to put it back on. But uh, all the engine now is all back together, all the time belt, the water pump's all done. So everything's plugged back in and filled it back up with coolant. So the only thing left to do now is give it a quick oil change, just to peace of mind more than anything else, and then put the bumper back on. So that's going to be it for this video. Please do like and subscribe if you can. It really does make a, a difference to the channel. And uh, there should be another video up fairly soon. I'll probably be doing the tow bar and a few bits and pieces and then hopefully on with the conversion. So 
Um, once again, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you again soon. Thank you.